Say it with your chest, bitch. That's what Katie told Lala, and she was fired up about it because Lala is not happy with Ariana, and Rachel doesn't seem to be very happy with Tom Sandoval. Lisa's telling him that it's over and he needs to move on, but he seems to still be in love. We have so much to break down. It's a new episode of Vanderpump Rules. Let's get it. You're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TVT, Surf Fresh, all week long. Now, let's dive in. Ooh, and dive in we shall. We got the mid-season trailer, so I feel like we're finally starting to get a little pickup on this new season. I know it's been a bit of a slow drag. Everybody's been dragging the season, but here we are. Episode 7. Finally starting to get better, so we probably have about another, what, six, seven episodes before we get into the reunion. Um... Yeah, I feel like it was a solid, a solid episode. This was finally a true solid episode. It's about time. I feel like we're finally getting somewhere. Uh, yes, Leisha, hit the like button, guys, if you are enjoying our Wednesday night live streams. Okay, so we start this episode off with Sheena and LVP. Sheena's very upset that she did not get Dancing with the Stars. Was she actually up for Dancing with the Stars? I don't think she's ever been up for Dancing with the Stars, but I feel like she's always wanted to be on Dancing with the Stars. And Lisa Tesh's like, darling, I remember when I got Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> and that's all you've ever wanted in life. And she's like, I know it's all I ever wanted. And Ariana's come a long way since being my backup dancer. And people are like, oh, Sheena's being so shady. I feel like Sheena was just trying to be a little cheeky. I don't think she was trying to be mean or shady. I think she, you know, she's just been a little... You know, but it was interesting seeing their confessionals this episode because the way they talked in their confessionals, it seemed Oof. like they are not fine. So I'm wondering how far past that filming these confessionals were actually shot. I mean, usually they're shot like a couple, like a several weeks to a couple months after like right. these scenes are actually filmed. But I mean, there is a lot of shade being thrown in the confessional. Yeah. So it kind of leads you to think that maybe they're on Rocky territory, yeah. but like, it's interesting because everyone's getting mad at Sheena and dragging her for saying that like, she's making this all about her and it's not about her. And she's not the one that went through a breakup, but like, you know, I, she is still grieving the loss of her friend, which I understand. And as Ariana being her friend, you know, I get, um, I get that like she wants to lean on Ariana, but I just don't think Ariana's the audience. I can think she needs another friend to be able to lean on because yeah. talking to Ariana about Sandoval is just not something Ariana has any interest in. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like Ariana has zero sympathy for anything or anyone when it comes to Sandoval. So it's like you said, you just got to pick your audience and she definitely isn't the one. And then you have Katie and Katie, I feel like just oh, validates Katie's that the last Katie one. pumps up Ariana yeah. so much. that It doesn't help. Um, but it's interesting. So we, we see the scene with Sheena and Lisa and Lisa kind of understands where Sheena's coming from. And I kind of get it. Like Sheena's always kind of always made it about herself. So this isn't like too out of character for Sheena. Um, but I think like it's natural. Like she has a grieving process that she like she's grieving the loss of her friendships with Sandoval and and Raquel. But she's not really allowed to because I feel like Ariana's really taking precedent, understandably. But like at the same time, she still needs her friend. She still needs Ariana to be there for her. But you also have to understand, like you know, sometimes your friends. After, like when you know Ariana's going through a breakup, and like she needs to just respect that that's what Ariana's dealing with, and that's what Ariana's going through. So she can lean more on Lala, or she can lean more on Brock, rather than having a higher expectation of Ariana in this moment. Right, and it's still relatively soon post Scandal. Like yeah. that's what a couple only months? a couple months. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely not the audience. But we do see Lala kind of pushing it a bit. And Lala wants Ariana to be a better friend um, and wants her to acknowledge Sheena's feelings and to acknowledge that, you know, Sheena's struggling with this too. And Ariana's like, well, I'm struggling with it too. You know, I feel like Ariana's very much trying to assert her position and to, you know, assert her feelings, but she's not necessarily um, 
willing to listen to, to Sheena, but I also feel like that's kind of fair because like it's so raw for Ariana still, and it's going to yeah. take a minute for her to process and get through those emotions, you know? For sure. But I get like Lala's coming from a good place, you know? I don't think Lala's coming from a bad place. I don't think she's trying to push Ariana out of her comfort zone. I think she's just like, listen, Sheena wants you to be her friend right now. Sheena needs you right now. And, you know, but Ariana's just like, I don't want to do that. I don't, I'm not capable mm -hmm. of doing that. I don't know if that's, a fair assessment. Like, I feel like if your friend needs you, you should kind of be willing to hear them out. Like you could, it's possible to compartmentalize your feelings. I don't know. I feel like they're still a little raw for Ariana though. Uh, yeah. I feel like that's her boundary. She's said it. She has told everyone and she's just, and she's not like getting mad at anybody. She's just like, this is where I stand. And it made a lot of sense at the end of the episode where she was like, I'm not going to be, forced to be in a situation with him with mutual yeah. friends and everything like that. I mean, you know, made total sense. Yeah. Um, so then we get to this lunch with Christina, Christina Kelly's back with her lip balm. We have Christina, we have Katie, we have Lala, we have Sheena. They meet for lunch and the topic of Sheena struggling with her friendship with Sandoval comes up and Katie is not having any of it she wants to shut it down she doesn't want to talk about it she's kind of like over this conversation about sandoval she's like i'm tired of people trying to give him the benefit of the doubt he's kind of a terrible person i don't think we need to give him any grace well but she also made a great point she feels like sandoval kind of always had it out for her and poisoned people against her and when she started getting emotional like she really feels that he poisoned Schwartzy against her. Yeah. So it's completely understandable that she would not want anything to do with him. I think she at this point might hate him more than Ariana does. But I think that it's because Katie's had like years of built up resentment for him. Yeah. Whereas Ariana just got that swift like knife to the heart. Yeah, I think Katie's kind of seen who Sandoval is for a while. Um, I do think it's a little unfair of her to put so much of the blame on Sandoval and not a little more of the blame on Schwartz because Schwartz could have stuck up to Sandoval. He could yeah. have not listened to Sandoval. And I don't think Sandoval was intentionally trying to, you know, taint Schwartz's, you know, view of his wife. I think Sandoval just didn't like her and Katie didn't like him. And they were very vocal about that. And unfortunately, Tom Schwartz is the one that chose to lean more on the side of Tom Sandoval. And I think it was probably because he was taking Katie for granted, assuming Katie's probably always going to be there for him because that's his person. That's his wife. That's whatever. I don't think he ever expected that Katie would leave him until she finally did. But we do get some really good insight into like, you know, the feelings that she was kind of harboring for Sandoval, which now makes a little bit of sense. But now I feel like she's jumping in on Sandoval to validate some of her like hatred for him that she's been harboring for some time. Makes sense. I mean, I guess I just <laughs> I get it. Um, I get why she doesn't like Sandoval and I get why she hasn't liked him but it's, I don't think his fault as much as I think it's Schwartz's fault because Schwartz has always chosen Sandoval, everybody else over Katie, but Sandoval specifically. Yeah, that's true. I mean, looking back at pretty much any time it came between Katie or anyone else, yeah, he usually did err on the side. But it, that was a great point. He just assumed that because she was his person that she would just always be there. But everybody's got their breaking point. Yeah. Then we get to LVP and Tom. And Tom's basically telling her that he's still in love with Raquel. He hasn't heard from her. He feels ghosted. He feels kind of abandoned by Raquel. And he doesn't really understand why. And he's kind of confused by all of this because he thought that they had a solid bond. Um, in some of his explanation of like the conversations that he was having with Rachel, I can see where there was some miscommunication, right? Where, you know, Lisa's like, where Lisa finally cops to saying, well, I spoke to, to Raquel at great length and she seems to be really upset with you. We seem to dance around the FaceTime video thing, which I think may be part of why Rachel's really upset with him. But I think she's more upset with him because she's in therapy and, you know, we're learning how to be a professional victim in therapy. Listen, I've been in these treatment centers. I understand a lot of the the protocols that are implemented and i do think they encourage you to lean more into your victimhood rather than they encourage you to lean more into your power um because they want to 
have they want to link a root cause to your current situation, your current pain, whatever it is, which is understandable, right? Sometimes I think people get stuck there, and I feel like that's kind of where Rachel's at, and that's why we see some of the behavior we're seeing exhibited from her now. Um, but I think you know, like when she, like when Lisa's, like you know, Rachel says that you said that you know, line is just like line is a part of like a part of life. And he's like, I never said that. But I'm like, well, I can also understand how like maybe he said like people are going to lie to you and that's just part of life. And she may have misinterpreted that as people like lying is just a part of life. So you should lean into lying. Like I can see the miscommunication and I can see how in this treatment center she's looking for reasons to validate why he's the bad guy and she's the victim. Um, again, I've been in these types of centers. I understand just the protocol and the approach, which I don't necessarily agree with which i've talked about in the past but it seems like rachel's done with him for whatever reason you know um i kind of understand his point of wanting her to like leave a little early because it's like the longer you stay in this treatment center the more it does become like a crutch which is part of the reason i left my treatment center when i was there for an eating disorder early or earlier than they wanted me to is because i was like okay i got it i understand the lessons that you're you know, instilling in me, but like the only way I'm going to learn how to face these things is once I'm back out into the real world rather than being in this confined bubble. So I understand his point. Everybody's different. Everybody has a different timeline. I don't know what her healing journey is like. You know, like Whitney Rose has been on a healing journey for like eight seasons now and Salt Lake's only been around for four. But like, you know, I get it, but I also agree with Lisa that like if she blocks you and she's done, then I think at some point you need to be willing to let go and move on. I'm just still trying to grasp the fact that you were just playing devil's advocate for both Tom and Raquel. I know. Look at that. Evolution. Oh my God. So it's over. It's done. Then Lisa goes on to visit Lala. We find out that Lala's evolving her brand. She's moving forward with Give Them Without Lala and without a baby daddy because now she just wants a donor because she doesn't want to end up in a situation again with like a, a Randall where you get stuck with a baby daddy that's terrible. And so we kind of see the, the beginning pieces of her starting to, you know, consider a donor, which we now know she is pregnant with, you know, a donor. She's doing it on her own. She's a single mom. Lisa's like, oh, that's a little crazy. But I was like, I'm sure of what I want to do. And I'm not changing my mind. Well, but I agree with Lala, especially given the trauma that she went through with Randall, that she wouldn't want to have anyone that's going to force like custody with her and everything like that. Yeah. She wants to have her baby herself. And you know what? I'm in full support. Yeah. Good for her. I mean, the fact that she's willing to do it and she can do it. Good for her. It was kind of annoying when she made her pregnancy announcement. So many people were just like, Oh, who's the baby daddy? Who's, you know, and it was just like, I don't know. I fully support Lala doing it all on her own. She can give them baby without the daddy. Then we meet Joe. Or it's his friend Joe. Mm. Who I think, what are your thoughts of Joe? Because I think she's fucking weird. Um, I, she couldn't get glam for that confessional. She's a fucking hairdresser and she couldn't even brush her own hair. When I was like, why did nobody brush her hair? And then everyone in the live chat this morning was like, she's a hairdresser. And I was like, oh my God. I just like th that <laughs> entire dynamic was just so off putting. It, it, it looked like two, I don't know, two high schoolers. See, but I, but I, but not, not in an uh, endearing way. It was awkward. I don't think it was so much. I mean, yes, it was a little awkward, I think, from the outside looking in. But I feel like they're on the same level of, like, emotional maturity. They're both stuck in high school. So, like, to them, they're kind of like, oh, we're cool, whatever. Yeah, and it's definitely playing out like high school because she definitely thinks that it's going further than it's actually going for Schwartzy. Yeah. Um, I just think Schwartzy's really bad at communication. You think? Yeah. And I just think she's so weird. Like she's on his level. Like, I mean, let's be honest. That's probably the best that he's going to be able to get with where he's at. You know, um, it's wild to think that he was with Katie and now, you know, Joe is the next option for him. Like, it's just a strange dynamic. Yeah. I mean, 
God, she is just seems complete opposite of Katie. She's just and, and now I know why Katie hates her and Katie wants nothing to do with her. Understandably. There you go. Um, I can do good without Joe on my screen anymore. I know we get more of her based off of the midseason trailer, but I'm good if we never have to see Joe. Um, then we see Sandoval going to hang out with Allie and James at Sir with Joe and Schwartz. Did you see the woman? Did anybody catch this? There was this woman sitting behind them. She had her glass of wine and she was just like staring daggers at Sandoval when he walked in. Did anybody else catch that? Because it cracked me the fuck up. I mean, that could also just be the editing. That wasn't editing. She was literally like, they didn't like zoom in on her. She was just in the background with her glass of wine being like this the entire time. Okay. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> I mean, it was funny. Um, Sandoval comes in. He has some new sunglasses that he's giving to James. And Allie's just like, he's trying to buy James's affection. Yeah. I mean, maybe to a degree, I just feel like Sandoval is so desperate to like have any allies and to have anyone in his court. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but Allie is seeing through all that shit. Which is good for her. I mean, listen, the astrology is working. I, I love Allie. Love her, love her, yeah. love her. She's really sweet. I met her last summer and she... So sweet. Such a nice girl. Um, and James seems to be balanced with her, whereas I feel like he wasn't balanced when he was with Raquel. Yeah. No, definitely not. Well, Allie then invites all the girls over so that she can give them each an astrology reading. We find out that Lala has blue Pluto in her something. Pluto in her rising something. I thought it was Jupiter. No, it was Pluto. And that explains why Lala has such a feisty communication style which we see on display i wonder Always. if i have any pluto in my probably <laughs> but so the girls are having their astrology night and ali put together listen i like ali and she's a sweet girl but that charcuterie board that she put together get your ass on pinterest go on tiktok like it's not hard to put together a charcuterie board but the, Leave that Allie was alone. so bad she's she's an astrologist she's not there to anybody yeah. can go online and google that like it's not that hard to put together a charcuterie board i would have put it together for her but and also, let me tell you, if I heard any other girl in L.A. saying that they were, you know, going to be an astrologist, whatever, I would probably roll my eyes so hard. But she does it. And I'm like, oh, my God, I just wanted to read my chart. I'd listen to anything she had to say. Susan said, uh, Pluto is no longer considered a planet. Well, that's because people like Lala blew it the fuck up. There you go. So she has the girls over. Meanwhile, the guys are having their gentleman's dinner. Sandoval tells them that Raquel ghosted him. And I didn't then, even pay attention to that dinner, to be honest with you. Well, we like see that Ariana is now annoyed that James is there and James is like making nice with Sandoval because Ariana's whole mindset is like, well, he's going to get to Sheena because Sheena's a pushover. And then he's going to get to James and then he's going to get to Lala. And eventually he's going to get everybody in the group to befriend him and turn on me and ice me out of the group i don't think anybody wants to ice out ariana i feel like she's kind of icing herself out by drawing uh -huh. a line in the sand yep, i agree with that that was exact my exact thought when i saw that i was like well you know you're you just don't want anything to do with him or anybody that does have anything to do with him so eventually people are gonna people don't want to be forced to do anything but at this point i say just let People be, be friends with him if they want to, yeah. whatever, but... And just make know. it clear to them that, like, I don't want to know anything. I don't want to be around yeah. him. Like, keep him in one corner. I'll stay in my corner. If you're going to be friends with him, cool. Because her whole thing with Lala this episode was, it's like, well, I don't want my ex to have any access to me. But it's like, how is he going to have access to you if you don't allow him to have access to you just because he has access to your friends doesn't mean that they're automatically going to be talking about you or giving him pieces of your life that they're going to share. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's just kind of where we are though. Yeah. 
she's icing herself out. It's called boundaries. I Yeah, I understand that she has boundaries, but she also has to understand that by setting certain boundaries, if they're that strict, then she is going to ice out, you know, those yeah. people if she, you know, prevents them from, if she tries to gatekeep them from who, and her whole thing is it's like, well, I'm not trying to gatekeep. I'm not trying to tell you who to be friends with and who not to be friends with. I'm just saying, if you happen to be friends with this person, then you're not my friend. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. but that is a form of gatekeeping. And unfortunately, yeah. you know, if you're afraid that he's going to ice you out, then it's not him that's icing you out. It's it's you, you know? Yeah. And then we get the mid-season trailer. And it's looking feisty. It and does. it's looking, we see Sheena and Tom trying to repair their relationship. We see Tom trying to have conversations with Ariana, and she is not having any of it. We see Tom approach Dan at the finale party and, like, try to, like, make nice with dan ariana's new boyfriend which is a choice um yeah it looks like it's the season's finally gonna start picking up i and him like trying to go after ariana i feel like that scene that they showed is probably gonna be the finale yeah that's the finale yeah. party well stay tuned i guess it's going to be a good one. Oh, and then Tom saying she talked shit about all of you. I mean, yeah. I'm sure she did. I'm sure he did. I'm sure they've all talked shit about each other, of you know, at different points. Have. Like, yeah. you know, he was with her for nine years and they've had ebbs and flows in their relationship that I'm sure she has at some point talked shit about each of them, you know, right. as we see them talking shit about each other in their confessionals. It's just kind of the nature of the beast, you know, people have opinions, people have falling outs, people, you know have ebbs and flows in their relationships and that's just part of you know i feel like all this show is is ebbs and flows with all of them i mean, there's, sure. there's, I mean it wouldn't be a show if they didn't but <laughs> i mean that's what we watch for um all right guys that's that's all we got for tonight it was a quick little recap lot to lot to get into seems like the season's going to be getting juicier so we'll probably have a lot more meat as the weeks go on but yeah, we have The Valley that's coming out next week. I'm excited. I got my screener for episode one. So I can't wait to watch that. I start, I, I saw like the first two episodes of it. Um, and boy, did I miss Kristen Doty. And I didn't realize how much of a Kristen Doty I am at heart until I saw her back on my screen. And I'm like, I am very Kristen. Um, just, you know, my soul sister. But Valley comes back next week. We have Vanderpump back next week full season i believe the reunion's already taping soon it's this week or next week it's they're already taping the reunion which means we're coming to the end of a, a short season which i don't know if oh, that's a good sign. yeah hmm. they're in the reunion taping soon. we'll see let me know if you're excited about the valley which is coming out this this tuesday. upcoming tuesday yeah. march 19th um, I believe there's going to be a crossover with Jax and Tom. So we're going to see Jax back on our screens next week mm -hmm. as it crosses over into the Valley. So yep. get ready for that. Be sure to subscribe to Josh on YouTube. Josh from Louisiana, please. <laughs> I'm doing, I have one more recap of Capote versus the Swans, which airs tonight, the finale. And I also do my recaps on Sundays where I do cooking tutorials and also talk about Southern Charm New Orleans because I'm from Louisiana, in case you didn't know. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, it's in the name. Fun facts, things you learn as you go. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week. We're here every Wednesday recapping Vanderpump Rules for you. So, Get ready every no, Wednesday not evening. Me next week, I'll be. In oh, Louisiana. that's right. You're going to be in Louisiana. I will be in Louisiana. I am officiating my niece's wedding. So, yeah. So, not next week, but back the week after that. Oh, All right, okay. guys. Have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend. And we will talk to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe to Josh on YouTube. There's a link in the description below. Go subscribe. He's finally at 750. Let's see if we can get him to 800 subscribers. Please, God. That's the goal. Trying to build that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye.